uh, excuse me, Rudy, we're live. We're live. Oh we're my, live, I'm sorry. Oh my um, God. We're live at this point. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, listeners. I'm sorry. My bad. Uh, welcome to another edition of, come on now, uh, your favorite sports and lifestyle podcast. You're here with your lovely host, Donald. Compare Rudy Rodriguez and Nicholas Taylor. Um, my name is Don. If you guys didn't turn on the first episode, uh, don't get it confused with Don King. My hair is a lot more lavish. I will give you a brief intro on myself. I'm a lifelong Bulls fan, lifelong Yankees fan. So I've been in purgatory as a fan lately. And um, you guys have to tune in for a few, few, few more weeks to learn a little bit more about myself. Rudy, chime in for the guys who didn't tune in the first week. My name is Rudy Rodriguez Shoma. I'm Mr. Unstoppable. Sorry, sorry. I didn't. I, I forgot the hyphen. Shoma. Yeah, 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 yeah. You did, man. That's that's tragedy, man. Oh uh, yeah, Rudy Rodriguez Shoma. I'm the Mr. Unstoppable right here. Uh, I just celebrated Founders Day for Five Beta Sigma yesterday. Been a member for almost 26 years. You I'm know, a, but uh, yes, sir. Uh, I'm a diehard uh, Yankees fan myself, and i um, been very this depressed. You know, they spoiled me for about. 10 years with those five championships we got in that period and multiple World Series appearances. Huge Hurricanes fan, big Heat fan, Dolphins fan, and of course the Dolphins are of course doing what the Dolphins do. And I'm a big UFC fan as you can see, but you know, and I will be going to the fight in March because I don't miss fights locally. Okay. Well, I guess it's my turn. <laughs> we have Nick Taylor here. Says Donald didn't want to introduce me. Um, you were already introduced. That's why you were already. Yeah, you, you have Nick Taylor here, man. CFL player, NFL player, Arena Football League, three-time champion, um, Division One basketball player, FIU. Um, been around the world, been playing a lot, been doing a lot of things, been doing my thing. I've been a baller my whole life. Um, but now I'm here, man, winning, talking with my gang, man. Um, I like to have a glass of wine while I talk. I'm going to call it wine and chime because <laughs> I'm a wine and then I'm going to chime in with my thoughts. Uh, and that's where we're at right now, man. Let's, um, let's get this next episode rolling. I'll drink a Coca-Cola. I'll drink a Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola, come sponsor us, man. Give us some money. <laughs> Let me throw that out there. Coca-Cola is not a paid advertiser at the moment. If you guys would like to be, please reach out to us via email. Uh, with that being said, we're going to throw into the first topic of the day. Um, we're actually recording at night. You guys wouldn't know that, but um, it's kind of a different mood for us. And I, I'm excited about the evening recordings. So that being said, let's dive into the first. And it's all things college football playoffs. Uh, Rudy, kick it off. Your thoughts, comments. How do you like the winners? How do you think the world feels? How do you feel? Well, um, I, I thought Michigan would win the game easily. The score says they did, but we know they didn't. It was a very good game for about three and a half quarters. Um, I thought Michigan really could have put the game away early, but um, Jim Harbaugh does Jim Harbaugh things and starts playing around. When they ran the ball, they dominated. When they decided to throw the ball, it wasn't as cute. <laughs> they made themselves, they made things difficult for themselves unnecessarily. I still don't think JJ McCarthy is a very good quarterback, and he pretty much showed that to me. You know, 140 yards to win a national championship passing. You know, I've always thought McCarthy was better when he ran, and when he ran, they actually it's what helped change the game um, in the in the second half when he had those two big runs that brought it from the five yard line or so to about midfield. And even even though they punted, it changed field position. You know, uh, the first quarter was absolutely ridiculous. It looked like Washington had not watched any film on Michigan because they ran the ball down their throats so easily, so quickly. And uh, at the end of the day, you know, Michigan got the job done. They were dominant all season. Their running game is incredible. Their offensive line was a bunch of bullies, and they were missing their starting center, who's their best lineman. You know, and then defensively, they made Michael Penix feel it. He really looked shook, especially in the second half. First half, he looked better, but but he I mean he did he missed he missed on some throws that he hasn't missed on all year. You know, the one he missed to Odunze in the first half, which would have made it 17-10, it, that was huge. You know, he missed on a number of other throws. There were some drops, but at the end of the day, like, he he was – by the second half, he was really feeling it. I mean, I think he broke his ribs. I mean, they haven't announced it yet, but every time he threw the ball, his entire he, – he, he, 
he grimaced like he was in pain and, and he wanted to be done with this game. You know, he, he, he did all he could do, you know, their, their line was under nonstop pressure and uh, end of the day, Michigan's defensive line finished the job. They made that pick late, brought it, you know, ran it all the way back and you know, get the touchdown and, uh, can't say I wasn't – I didn't expect it. I expected Michigan to win. I thought Washington gave him a fight. But at uh, the end of the day, the best team won. Yeah. As Rudy, as Rudy said, the game was an indicate. The, the score was an indicate. It wasn't like – the score wasn't – was a true – it wasn't true of uh, what it really was. Um, the game was closed most of the, most of the time. Um, Michael just – like I said before, I said last week, he needs to have a Vince Young performance, and he did not. Um, that's the only way that's going to be in that game. Michigan was truly more dominant than them. They were the better team. They came out from the get-go, and they showed it. They pounded the ball down their throats. Um, Rudy said they didn't watch any film. I'm pretty sure they watched the film. They knew what they what, what they were going against. Just you can't do shit about it. <laughs> it was just better, bigger, and stronger. They they pushed them around. They The running back came back, and he was cutting everywhere. He made big runs on two plays for a touchdown. Um, they had no answer for him. Um, but at the end of the day, if Michael hit a couple of those throws, they're in the game. The game is tight. And then you don't know what J.J. McCarthy's going to do. Um, they had to put the game more in his hands than on their running backs. And we saw how he was throwing the ball that night. It wasn't that great. Um, but he was running it well, like Rudy said. Um, but as we said um, before, the game was – it was it was close. But – like I said, we needed Michael to be Ben Shelton. He wasn't. Um, at the end of the day, we said Florida State should have been in there, and I think they still should have been in there. I think the committee got it wrong. Um, they run the ball well, and they play defense well. And what this playoff showed, and our most playoffs showed over the, what, 20, 30, 40, 50 years of football show, if you play defense, you have a chance, and Florida State would have had a chance, and the committee got it wrong. I think ultimately, if we look at it today, Maybe they threw Nick Saban a bone. Maybe they knew, but we didn't know that Nick Saban was going to retire. Hey, let's throw Alabama in there one last year. Let's give him a chance. Now that you you look at it, now you're like, hmm, maybe that's what happened. But at the end of the day, um, Washington was there. They didn't get it done. They had a chance. Michigan won. Harbaugh, victory for him, man. Good kudos to him. He goes against the allegations. People are saying, um, is this championship tainted? No, it's not tainted. Um, everybody cheats, if you want to call that cheating. Everybody still signs. Maybe you might not have nobody jump the gate to go steal a sign, but everybody still signs, and it's up to each coach's staff to change signs repeatedly, have dummy signals, and do all of that, all of those things. So that's on them. Um, Michigan deserved it. They won it. They got it, man. Kudos to them. Championship, 2024. You know what? I, I want to add something. You mentioned Florida State. That you're absolute. I mean, I hate agreeing with you, but that's why FSU should have been in this thing. Because I actually think FSU would have beaten both. I think FSU would have beaten both these teams. They would have beaten both these teams. Yeah, F- um, FSU's defensive line is dominant. They could run the ball really well. I think they would have been a much better matchup um, for Michigan. I think they would have beaten Washington because it would have been a two-three game to me. It's what it should have been because Texas shouldn't have been a three. It should have been FSU as a three. I think FSU would have beaten Washington. They would have had Verse would have had Penix running for his life, and um, they, I think they would have beaten Michigan. And let me let me put the record out there. I'm a Hurricanes fan saying this. I'm a Miami Hurricanes fan saying, I think FSU would have beaten both these teams. Yeah, I was, absolutely believe wanted, that. With the backup quarterback, all you had to yeah. do is not make mistakes. They had enough talent yeah. around them. They had great receivers. They had Benson back there, running back, who's great, awesome. Um, and their defense was probably the best defense out of the four teams that played. And listening to the complaining that I'm reading online where people are saying, oh, my God, you missed this holding call on Michigan. How could you call that call on the on, on the right tackle 73 on the pass to Adunze? What are you talking about? He tackled him. He clotheslined him with his left arm and then let go and took the right arm across his back to take him right down. The hold was called before he threw the ball. He'd have been sacked ha- otherwise. Because it happened so fast, people are, are thinking, oh, it shouldn't be called, but it was a, it was the right call. It, 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 you know, and they, they then they called out the one with they said there was one on McCarthy right before McCarthy hit that pass over the middle to the tight end. You know what? Calls get missed. Offensive linemen are trained to hold. Yeah, I played offensive line in high school. You're trained to hold. You're taught you to hold. You can't you call, block without holding. If you, you, exactly. The technique of it. If, if you're grabbing in the pads and they pull away, you got to let go. If you hold on, it's holding. 
And, and I mean, we're literally taught digging underneath and, and hold it. And that's yes. how I was taught by often by professional football players. Once and you, to, you, you, your yeah, arm, you gotta let go. You gotta let it go. You, here, you, it's, yeah, it's you hold them. Yeah. And, and what kills me is they mentioned that play. Like at the end of the day, Washington had five penalties for 30 yards and Michigan had five for 45. Mm-hmm. So this thing about the referees are trying to get it, give it, give it to Michigan is nonsense. But I'll tell you what, that one play where McCarthy threw that, threw that ball to the tight end over the middle, that was a bad throw. It was way too high. But actually, it ended up working out because the safety who's right behind him, I think would have lit him up if the ball's thrown here. Because it was thrown here, you have these new rules of you can't hit anybody and blah, blah, blah. He kind of pulled up. Dude goes by him. And then he came back and made the tackle 40 yards down the field. He thought thought the ball was going to be overthrown and he was going to catch it. So It was a tremendous catch. He made a split-second decision of thinking, oh, I might might be able to sneak an interception here, but... Mm -hmm. The, the the tight end obviously you know six five six six yeah. it's not a tough catch for him to get up there and get make that catch right there so I mean the, the two throws that, that McCarthy's gonna get credit for for being such great throws he needed a, he needed incredible catches from the first game against Bama and now this one his two biggest plays were incredible catches they weren't good throws in my opinion but was, that just were, goes to where they, I don't think McCarthy's they, that great they could have been worse throws they were they weren't bad well they could have been yeah they could have been worse but you know. They weren't great. (laughs) Um, As he takes another sip of the Coca-Cola that we're not being paid by, uh, let's dive into topic two. I want to have some final thoughts for topic one. I think the best story was told for college football. Um, Michigan winning had everything to do with leading up to next year's college football playoff, which will be 12 teams. I think it's the best way to go into the new series. And we're going to have a lot to talk about with 12 teams. I think we're never going to have the issues. Yeah, the 13th team year. is going to be mad. We're not going to have some of the issues that we've had. With <laughs> you, you know, they better, uh, they better. Uh, five years ago, there was a year I remember when they should have absolutely been in the national championship game and they weren't. Which team? Uh, UM's, I think, 2000 team. Oh, 2000 against uh, FSU. Yeah, I mean, uh, that was, was a different year that they should have been in. You know, things like mm-hmm. that. I think we're not going to have any of those issues. So I think that's really great. And um, I think they, people forget a huge part of sports is storytelling. There wasn't a better story. They just need to cap. They need to cap how many teams from each conference. Because if you don't cap it, you're going to have a, the Big Ten SEC Invitational with well, five. That's, well, that's all, college, that's all college football is now. It's going to be the Big Ten and SEC. Well, you know, but, yeah, yeah you need if, if you don't cap it at, like, three per conference, you're going to have a Big Ten SEC Invitational based on rankings that are designed – at the beginning of the season, based on your conference affiliation, let's be top, real. All the top teams will be there, though. It, it, well, yeah. And, and now, and now with the a, a realignment. Yeah, television money, man. They they're they're doing that for a reason. Like it's a specific it, reason. The ratings it, just keep going up for college football. I I know why they have ranking. I know why they have preseason rankings re- rankings beginning of the season because it it's for to build up games early on. But realistically, you shouldn't have rankings until week six. Because if I showed you the resume of Alabama and took their name off, took the SEC off, and showed you the results and took gave you some other team, you would you would not have Alabama ranked in the top fifteen at that time. Mm-hmm. They would have been ranked sixteen between fifteen and twenty, probably sixteen and twenty. And instead of being in the playoff, they would have never made it. Because you, because I'll give you an example: Miami's probably going to start the season ranked outside the top twenty-five. They're going to have to go 5 and 0 to get into the top 25. If they lose one game, they'll be right back out of the top 25. And this entire playoff is based on rankings. FSU right now is not projected to start the season ranked in the top 15 because they're losing so much. So, you're going to have a, an entire basically it's, if they don't cap it, and I'm sure they won't cap it, but they should because the only way that you're going to have conferences, you know, other 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 conferences having, you know, teams in there outside of conference champions because what I read was that the top each conference champions guarantee the spot. After that, it's based on rankings. Well, if you've started the season off giving five of the top twelve teams to the SEC, they can lose three times and still be ranked in the top twelve by the end of the year. Whereas another team from the ACC, like Louisville, for example, can be eleven and one and be ranked fifteenth. We'll yeah, see what yeah. happens. Ultimately, I think they, they should get it right. Twelve teams. I mean. I mean, if you're the 12th, 11th team, 10th team, I'm, I don't want to hear shit anyway, so whatever. But if you're 11 and 1 ranked 15th and there's a 9 and 3 team ranked 8th, that's a problem. 
if you're in a Power Five conference not named the SEC or Big Ten. Or, I'm sorry, the Big 18 now, whatever the hell they're going to call it. You guys have all valid points. We're going to wrap this section up before we talk the entire episode about college football. There's enough shows that are dedicated to that. We're going to go into one of our favorite topics, Rudy's um, dream topic. I think he has this dream every night that he discusses all things LeBron. Um, I think the first thing we're going to discuss is probably his inconsistent play with the Lakers since the in-season tournament. And I I, want to preface this by saying this isn't the same topic we discussed last week. Last week we discussed in-season tournament. This one is specifically about... LeBron and some of the recent um, announcements or statements he's made in the press. Uh, one per se that his son would be able to play in the NBA right now with the Lakers. I personally think Bronny would be able to play in the NBA right now. I'm not sure if he would be beneficial to the Lakers team, but I think he is talented enough to be in the league because there are some guys that I think that are not good in the NBA. And I think he's a really good 3 and D guy. So floor is your guys. What do you guys think? Go ahead, Nick. Yeah, uh, that comment was wild, man. He's playing with a team right now with players who confidence are being are shook right now. They're losing. Everything's not going right. And then you come out in the middle of the season when everything's going downward, spiral, and you say that your son is good enough to be here. Like, no, he's not. He's not better than anybody on that roster right now at this moment. He's averaging six points a game at USC, albeit in 17, 18 minutes a game. He's shooting 27% from three, and that's big. If you're going to play on a LeBron team, you have to be able to shoot the ball because he's kicking it. He's driving. He's kicking it. He's ball dominant. So whatever point guard he think he is, he won't be that with LeBron because LeBron is the point, is the point guard everywhere he goes. So to say that statement was utterly ridiculous is wild. I mean, he probably he can probably play in the NBA, but he hasn't shown that right now. He's just coming back off the, the heart condition. He's just getting his feet back wet in college. He's not dominating there. How is he going to make it to the NBA? Everybody who's in the NBA dominated in college, whether it was a small school, big school or not. Most of those players dominated. He hasn't dominated yet. So. That was just a wild statement. Um, the Lakers need to worry about winning. They have a, enough things going on over there um, to put that pressure on the guys that's there. I mean, the other day, they didn't even have D'Lo and, and somebody else was out. So he's saying that while they don't have their full roster, that's just – that's crazy, man. Um, I'm sure Rudy's going to dive in more, and then I'll come back after Rudy because I know he's going to be – he's going to totally kill LeBron. And I'm here for it. Rudy. I'm sorry. I, I, mute, I muted myself because I was coughing. My apologies. Um, I, I hate agreeing with you, but, you know, I have to, but you were too nice. It's complete bullshit what he said. And he said he could come and play for the Lakers. He already mm-hmm. said in the past he could play in the NBA. Mm-hmm. This statement this week was about he could play with the Lakers. Let's take a look at who's on the Lakers right now. D'Angelo Russell is a 20-point-a-game scorer when he played for the T-Wolves. He's also been – he's also right now averaging 15 a game. Austin Reeves is averaging 15 a game. D'Angelo Russell was a stud at Ohio State. And, and Brooklyn. And Brooklyn. Rory Hachimura was a stud at Washington. Remember, Rory Hachimura was a big part of why they made the Western Conference Finals. Let's not forget that. Torian Prince was a great college player. Christian Wood was a great college player. Cam Reddish was a stud at Duke. And I don't think Cam Reddish is very good, to be honest. I thought he should have stayed at Duke longer. He should have honed his game more. I think that's why he's not where he could potentially be right now. But Cam Reddish, Bronny James is better than Cam Reddish. Suck it. Get the fuck out of here. Get out of here. Cam Reddish is not better than Bronny James. Cam Reddish would take Bronny James's lunch and say, what? Like, get out of here. It's such nonsense. Is he better than Gabe Vincent if Gabe Vincent could ever play? Hell no. Hell no. Like, this is nonsense. And for him to say that, it's just already – we already know what he's setting it up. He's setting it up for a trade because he wants to blame somebody else, as usual. Let's blame somebody else because it's never LeBron James' fault when we lose. Never my fault. Always everybody else. You know who's been balling his ass off? Anthony Davis. He's been balling. 
And I don't like it. I'm not a Laker fan. I don't like LeBron James. I don't like anything associated with LeBron James. Anthony Davis is having a monster, monster year right now. And since the playoff, play, the, the NBA Cup, he's been fantastic. Yesterday, I think he put up 40. You know, I mean, they got a gift from the officials, giving them 23 free throws to two in the fourth quarter. I watched that game. That was atrocious. And LeBron's response was, oh, they fouled. Bro, I watched the game. You guys fouled too. And that junk was absurd. They called a flagrant foul on Emmanuel quickly, driving the lane, going an up over like this to shoot it with his right hand. His elbow hits Cam Reddish in the face. Not on purpose. He's shooting the ball. He makes the bucket. They call a flagrant foul on him. He fouls out. They get free throws. Reddish hit one of the two free throws. That was the score. That was the ball game. A one-point game. And then about, you know, all the other free throws that were scored, you know, shot in that in that fourth quarter. But for him to say that, his team's confidence is shot, and he's shitting on them. It's embarrassing that he gets away with this shit, and no one says a word. Um, it, it, it just goes to show you that it's everyone for ESPN is a shill to suck LeBron, to suck off LeBron, and whatever he says is okay. It's ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous to say some crap like that. Because I'll tell you right now, if I'm a teammate of LeBron and he gets put on his ass, I'm grabbing some popcorn to look at him. If he gets, I'm telling you right now, if I know I'm going to get traded, I'm going to lay his ass out or do my day. I'm going to take a chair, WWE style, and crack him with it. Because you know what? You're not going to say no bullshit like that about me as a teammate and basically say you're a freaking 18-year-old child. Maybe he's 19 now. Is better than me while he's averaging six points a game at USC. Newsflash, USC sucks. They suck. And he's averaging six a game on 27% shooting from three. He's a three and D guy. Get the fuck out of here. Hey, one, one thing we know, LeBron's going to hype his kid. He gonna yeah. Always, he always going to go back for his kid. I ain't never going to be mad at that, but at this case. But, no, but, but this is disrespectful. Yeah, this is yeah, just disrespectful. Yeah, I, I, and I don't agree with Rudy much. I don't. But when he's fucking right, he's fucking right. I, I would not be hyped to play LeBron right now, man. Every second, you're blaming it on somebody else. Take accountability sometimes. It's been like that his whole career. And and I let it slide just because I, I respect the man game. But at a certain point, you got to be like, damn, this on me. He hasn't been playing well after the fucking the tournament anyway. He's been 12 points here, 18. But as expected, he's fucking 40, so I can't get fucking mad for what he does and the nights he has, slow nights or good nights, you know, because somebody else has to step up. And 80s has been stepping up, but I don't know what their problem is. They just haven't been winning. They haven't been playing the defense that they played last year, obviously. They were, the thing that got them there to the Western Conference Final, they played defense last year. Rui was fucking amazing. He was able to play fours. He was able to guard fives. He was able to guard threes, and he was shooting the ball well. Um the editorial prince, and I think he's a good ad. Um, I'm not hating on him like Gilbert Arenas is hating on him. I think he's a good person to have on your in your starting five. You know, he's good three and D. He's gonna he's not gonna ask for the ball. He's gonna stay in the corner. He's gonna get the ball. He's gonna shoot it. But I don't think you can have him and Cam Reddish in there at the same time. That's just that ain't that ain't getting nothing nothing done. I, I mean, they can't, they, they can't shoot. They can't shoot. That's part they, of the problem. They, they can't of shoot. Of course, they can't shoot. That's been that's always the problem because LeBron. He needs that. He needs the floor spread. It's been like that this whole time. If you don't build a team around him with three and D players, I mean, you can keep AD, of course, because he's a fucking stud, but the rest of your players have to abide by the, the laws of fucking LeBron because yeah. that's what's going to happen. He, he but, you're, but, with, you're, yeah. but you're 27% son shooter from three in college. Remember, it's another two feet out in the NBA, except for the corners. Is yeah. going to be the one that changes the game? Come Trust on, me, I know. I went to the I went to the. That's a uh, long perimeter. shot. <laughs> I went to the perimeter in Miami the other day, and, and I'm shooting. But I'm shooting NBA threes, and I say, Lord have mercy, these are real, real threes, bro. Like, <laughs> I say, hell no. Nah. And, and, and when they're and when they're four feet behind that line, shooting it, man, like it's a it. layup. That's it, crazy, boy. I was like, nah, nah. And, 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 and LeBron, so so <laughs> drop his three point percentage from twenty seven to twenty two, basically. Yeah. He's not helping him right now. He, 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 has, he has a nice stroke, though. I, I love his form. He, has a, he looks beautiful. Yeah, he, he, he could become a good. He could. He could become a good NBA role player in three yeah. years. Yeah. In three years. But to say that today, this, it's, it's insulting. How, how many players then, based on that, could play in the NBA right now, including his teammates? Right. Like, I can't. 
There's guys on the her- there's guys all over the country in college that can play in the NBA than right now. There's there's a hundred guys in the G League that can play in the NBA right now who are better than Bronny James. It's and, I, and I'm and i not trying to shit on Bronny James. Yeah, I like him because because he's actually a good player. He's a mm. he's a he's a good type of player that you want on a team. He does defend and he's not a ball dominant guy. He's a he's a he's a he has been a good shooter. I mean, it's it's new for him here. I get it, you know. But come on, man. To, to diss your teammates like this, before it was they diss the whole league. Now I'm going to diss the guys in my locker room. Bro, I mean, that, that shit does not fly. I don't know how you feel, Nick, but if you're, if you're, if you're I don't know, your cornerback said, man, I, I mean, there's this, there's this college DB that could, that, could, that could start on my team right now. You would knock that motherfucker out. Are you kidding? I don't care if he's the quarterback. That'd be a fight. Yeah, That'd be a yeah. fight. Right. Yeah, like who? Nobody. Who says that? Nobody says that at this level. Nobody, but except LeBron James. Because I, I, I didn't, I didn't hear Dwayne Wade say that shit about about uh, Zaire Wade. No, nah, I think Bronny's. Be, I think Bronny's better than Zaire Wade. But like, I, I, who? Like who says that? Oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! Like just awful. This is the, this is the face of the league that disrespects his teammates, disrespects the league. This is, I mean, my god. Yeah, but yeah, I'm done. Uh, did, you, did you get enough uh, vitriol out of your system, Rudy? Just one of them. Uh, I got. I I might have. I'll have more next Wednesday because I'm sure he'll do. Look, I, I, he'll do something else. He'll say or do something else that will piss me off. But look, they beat the Clippers this past week. That was a big win. That was a huge win because the Clippers have been playing great, and he and he was a major part of that big time win. Shout out! Shout out to Kawhi, his new contract. Extension. Shout out to Kawhi. 100%. Big time win for them, and now they got they got two wins in a row because now the NBA wants to try to ensure that they make at least the play in. Because uh, last night, ver- last night versus Toronto was a disgrace to see. I've never were, seen twenty three to two in the fourth quarter. They and, were, and, and they were fouling Rudy. No, they fouled in the last night in the last six. No, no, but LeBron said they didn't. The Lakers didn't foul. Scotty Barnes went to the rim all game. The, the Raptors had 70 points in the paint. The Lakers had 50. Yeah. But, the, but, the, but the narrative today on TV was the Raptors were shooting threes. Guess what? The Lakers shot seven threes in the fourth quarter. They were getting fouls on bullshit. They got a, there was a foul call on Manuel quickly on Anthony Davis where Davis just misses the bunny layup. And then quickly, like at one point, it has his hand here. I, he didn't move Anthony Davis anywhere. Davis is six ten. The damn rim. Was, oh, come on, man! There was fouls on the on the Lakers that weren't called. There weren't. They weren't called. They lost. At the end of the day, they lost. They yeah, lost. they lost because they they they, they took the, they took the lead. I don't. I don't want to. Yeah, they took the lead and they, immediately they, got they, and then the referee came back and immediately let fucking Anthony Davis get a fucking layup. What, 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 what was 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 the foul? Was that flagrant foul or flagrant foul? On, on quickly, no. no. Would you even call it an offensive foul on quickly? No, he's no. shooting the ball. He was no, shooting no. the ball. So, yeah, the, no, so really, it should have been an air one for him. He made the bucket. He no, lost the bucket. No huh? change nowadays. Any, anything to the face, anything they're going to check it out in. But if I'm it. if I'm doing this in my shooting motion, I can't. Like how you call it a flagrant foul? They even they even worded it. He swiftly moved his elbow across. <laughs> You He's shooting the ball. You can't move it swiftly, Rudy. You gotta move so it you have to move it quickly. like this. <laughs> yeah, and get it stolen. That's how the fuck you move it. Yeah, get stolen. Like it's crazy. Well, well uh, thank you guys for your colorful commentary on all things LeBron. I think that was exciting. I think it was entertaining. Um, one of my favorite sports personalities is Dick Vitale. Do you guys remember Dick Vitale? Of course. He had a segment that he used of to course, do. He used man. to say, uh, diaper dandies. I yeah. love the diaper dandy. He could talk about one player. He could talk about a team. A diaper dandy could have been a, a fan with an amazing poster. I just love that. So with that being said. And, and lost you. Hello. We lost yep, you. After diaper dandy. Yep. You're back now. Back. Uh, we're gonna edit that in in, okay. in studio. Um, <laughs> all things hyper dandy. Going into the the tradition of those moments, I'm creating my own segment. The guys don't know about. It's called Don's Dimes. 
uh, these are no look passes, no look topics that the guys don't know about <laughs> in pre production meetings. And I just throw out a topic, and the guys just have to give me their first stop. So, Don's Dimes, should coaches get $120 million contracts? Why the fuck not? Give it to them. They earn it. Players are getting fucking $300 million contracts, and they're coaching them. So, why the fuck not? It, it makes yeah. it makes perfect sense to me. If I earned it, pay me. Like, give me my bread. I need all that. I need it, and I need it now. It's my money, and I want it now. Like, Spo deserve it. One twenty. That's nothing. He probably should have got two hundred. Did, did Did you just quote a Berkshire Hathaway commercial right there? It, it, JG, I'm sorry. JG, JG Wentworth. JG Wentworth. We need to get a sponsorship from them now. You know. Anything, Come on now, needs a sponsorship from JG Wentworth. Hey, I want my money, I want it now. Hey, anything could be said during wine and chime. Listen, I, I mean, look, uh, Eric Spolster getting eight for 120, 15 million a year. If there's a coach that deserves it, it's him. The what the what that man has done is with 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 quite yeah, frankly, yeah. sub substandard talent comparatively to all these other teams that 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 advance deep in the playoffs, you know. He he's done a great great job, you know. There's, I mean, for Christ's sakes, they won. I mean, he's taking teams to the playoffs. That, I mean, come on now. Like, hey, his best coaching job was forty one. Was forty one okay, forty one? Okay, okay, exactly. His best coaching job. They started off we're, ten and thirty one we, we and terrible. finished thirty one and ten. I and, said that and, year. I said that year. If we played, unreal. If we, if we played Cleveland in the playoffs, we would have gave them a run. We would have that 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 coaching yeah. job he did because we were on fire. Dion Waiters and Goran <laughs> Dragic. I mean, I was. I mean, it was to watch though. James Johnson looked like a different type of player. James Johnson they, was amazing. I uh, mean, my God. Then he we handed made him the in ball. The he handed the ball. He he dumped the ball. He shot the three well. It was ugly, but it got off. He was amazing. Yeah. He, he looked like Lamar Odom. Times two back then, like he was doing everything for us. And, and then we paid him and Dion Waiters, and they went to hell. Um, yeah, but, to yeah, but, was, but 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 yeah, I mean the job he did that season, the jobs he's done with these this team, these teams with Jimmy Butler and Bam. I mean, let's be real, Miami doesn't have the talent of some of these other teams, but they're dogs, and they, and they play, play them. for a while. They, yeah, but they're dogs. Look, look, Jimmy Butler went to the finals his first season with the Heat. His first season. First season. He, you know, he's been in the finals now twice. Remember, this is the guy that was a cancer. Mm -hmm. er Eric Spolstra is a major reason for why this man is doing what he's doing. Got to give this man credit. I mean, I, I I think Jimmy Butler was a dog before he got to Miami. I've been wanting Jimmy Butler for two, three years before he got to Miami. Nick knows this very, very well. So, and I would have traded the farm to get that dude. You know, the, the, Jimmy Butler, and I need him to get his ass healthy again. Uh... We drafted him. You're welcome. I know. Oh, the gym. I mean, I don't know why the Bulls ever let that man go. Personally, We're, we don't have a you great front office. <laughs> well, yeah. we don't have a great. Office. You know, but it's yeah. funny how all these. You know, Jimmy Butler's a cancer here, a cancer there. Comes to Miami, he's been perfect. Mm -hmm. He's been perfect. It's Eric Spoelstra does. I think that. I, I. I mean, yeah, I'm a Heat fan. I like the idea. I think it's corny, but <laughs> I think the Eric culture thing is corny at a certain point. It's, it's a cute. real thing. It, 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 you know. It, 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 come, like you would think, like oh, everybody goes to every team and they gonna work hard and do all of those things mm -hmm. that make them better. But no, they demand that shit here, and yeah. you can see it because we're getting maximum play from minimum players, or at least that's our perceived that minimum players. So let's 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 put it this way: on any other team right now in the league, I'm gonna say on any of the contending teams in the league, is Bam Adebayo your second best player? No. Is he the third. second best player? Third. Third. He's not the second best player for you the Celtics. What? He's not the second best player on the Lakers. He's not the second that's best a, player on the... Um, he's not the second a, best. He could be a second best player. This year, Bam. Contender. Contender. contender was contender. Question Rudy asked. Like, I asked. Right now. Right now. On those con teams. teams. He would not. He would not be the second best player on any contender. He's the Cont second best player on the Celtics. No, he would not be. No, he's not. No, Jaylen, Brown, you, got Jaylen, you got Jalen Brown over here? God damn. Brown, Nick, 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 we and both think Jalen Brown. Nick, you know oh, you can't do you can't do that, Nick, because you damn well know that we both think Jalen Brown's the best player on the Celtics. We uh, both think he's better than Jason Tatum. Uh, four years with me. 
I, I think Jalen Brown's the best player on the hey, Celtics. You know, but, you know, but come on live it. You know, but come on live and turn it up a little bit. Switch it up. Live a little bit. <laughs> Yeah, because Jalen, I, I thought Jalen Brown was better than Jason Tatum forever, and I still think he is. And I thought, I thought because he was, I thought because he was dark, because he was dark skin. Top, top three Tatum for five years. I think because he was, because he was dark skin, they wanted the light skin guy to be the, the, the face. No, of the I, I, but but Bam, but Bam, but Bam. Well, yeah, I, that's that's the main reason I think that Jalen Brown's not looked at as the best player on that team. As crazy as it's, I mean, it sounds crazy, but he's that's in Boston. racism. Triple. Oh, for play. sure. No, he neither, neither can Tatum. Neither can Tatum. Tatum's a turnover machine versus the Heat too in yeah. the playoffs. Dribble. That's yeah. why he's not the best. But player. everybody just found that out last year. But I know it. But I'm telling you right now, he's not the second best player on any of the contending teams right now. Who else? Who Bam else? is a Bam is a great defensive player. He's a great player to have. But we need Bam to score 25 and 12 a game. And he's not. I'm sorry, I'm falling down the rabbit hole of getting down of in the weeds with you guys. I shouldn't be doing this. Let me have some decorum as the moderator. You need, you need, to, you need to give your opinion too. It's okay. Come on. We, we, we got Come off on now. We got off topic. Yeah, you know, we just we swayed a little bit. Well, yeah. The, the answer was Eric Spolster. Damn right. Now, Greg Popovich, Greg Popovich, take his money back, please. Take Greg Popovich's money back. Because that man's been a loser for four years now when he got lost all his talent. That's what makes... That's what makes Eric Spolstra so damn good, is that Eric Spolstra has won with no talent. Greg Popovich can't win with the number one pick in the draft, who's seven foot five. Keep it a hundred, and in fact, his the players don't want to understand and don't want to accept that he's your best player. That's the yeah. I, they Popovich. won't accept it, and if Popovich can't drill it in, they yeah. should fire his ass. Yeah. Because the fact that they are like with five and twenty-five with that dude in this league, hey, come on. First, there was the, a there was a play. Practice. First practice, I'm yelling out, hey, if Wembe yo mama don't touch the ball every, <laughs> every possession, time, every possession, you will sit the fucking bench. If you don't, you don't. You don't pass him the ball. Come on, come here. Come sit by me. Oh, they don't pass him the ball. Come sit by me. Oh, you. Oh, you too. Oh, bitch, come here. Sit down. You. Oh, come. Come here. Everybody else. Everybody sit the fuck down. Who the fuck do y'all think y'all are? Give him the ball. He's the best person on the team. He's seven five. He's by the rim. Give him the ball. You just throw it by the rim. Who's gonna catch it? Are there was a, there was a clip they had on TV where when Bayana got down to the rim, he's hold out his hand. There's no one guarding him. And one of the other players on the team dribbles all the way to the rim and shoots a layup over Wemba Yama. Yeah. <laughs> and they say, get the ball to your freaking best player. What are you doing? Watch out, coach. It's my time to shine, baby. <laughs> so, <laughs> He's giving it to him, baby. I'm on TV, baby. Got all the babies here on the front, on court side. In San Antonio, all the big girls are here to see me. <laughs> Uh, hey, by the way, yeah, it's actually true because I've been to San Antonio for a basketball game and they're not like Miami Heat games. Listen, we're not going to say that right now. All <laughs> oh, the big girls that made a TV, baby. Come on, Charles, Bar- Charles Barkley said it for years. Come on now. Charles Barkley's television show is syndicated. Relax. I am yeah. not passing but, it to win by my mama. But, yes, um, I think coaches should get paid if, they're, if they've shown that they can do the job. I mean, because yeah. – I mean, where I come from, if the boss is the boss, should not be making less money than the help. That's what they say. But <laughs> in the NBA and in, pro- in professional sports, they change the game. That the the players make more than their bosses. I, I guarantee you. I guarantee you, the VP of the Miami Heat makes less than every player on that team. You the oh, you the boss. Should. Oh, I'd make more than you. I'd get your ass out of here about tomorrow. Pat, Pat, Pat Riley's the boss. I guarantee he makes less money than Jimmy Butler. Mm-hmm. As he should. I'm sorry. But that's what I'm saying. In most businesses, yeah, but, but, the boss yeah, but, makes well, more than the workers. Well, Rudy is saying, in every other in, place. Okay, in my viewpoint, the boss of a sports organization is the government owner. Owner, owner, the owner that's, okay. that's how I view it. I don't view it as the oh. management staff. Well, the, pr- well, the president the, is... The, I just don't know. Ahead, the president of the organization is the one... I mean, and the, and the GM are making all the decisions... To hire and fire, pretty much, and yet they make like a fraction. I mean, Pat Riley is is as high on the totem pole as it gets, and I don't think I don't think he makes a fraction of what Jimmy Butler makes. 
But yet, if he wanted to, he could trade Jimmy Butler tomorrow. <laughs> and that's the crazy Things thing about money. That's, that's sports, what's crazy. Of course, nowadays. Yeah, so that's beautiful. I, I wanted uh, a chance to throw in Don's Dimes. No looks. Um, and you guys, you caught it. You caught it. There's going to be some weeks that you guys are not you're not ready for it. It's going to hit you in the chest. Um, but I'm glad you guys were prepared. Uh, with that being said, we're going to get into the, the third. If it had been about hockey, we would have been in trouble. World of our show, and this is an exciting one. You've been talking about that by y'all, so. The games that are this week. <laughs> I haven't um, talked about my I, wouldn't be... I ain't got no hockey um, for y'all, but I'll tell y'all that. You're, go- you're going in and out, Don. Hello. Maybe we get him back. Maybe we don't. Me and Rudy could banter. Oh, okay. There you go. <laughs> Wait, am I back? Am I, am I yeah, back? you're back now. Now you're back. Yeah. Sorry, you guys, for the technical technical difficulties to all the listeners and the viewers. You missed out on my beautiful face for 67 seconds. You got dollar? That. We need to get you some like Xfinity or something. I don't know you what's got, going on. That's actually quite disrespectful. I you got that zero? <laughs> speed. I got that uh, zero over there. <laughs> talking about i just you know had common courtesy to not call you guys out when you froze i didn't call you guys out, but we're, we're not gonna go that's neither here nor there we're gonna go to the third section of our show and discuss all things nfl playoffs i know you guys are excited about the game still gotta put the disc in for to get everywhere through for them. Can you be serious for once, Nick? Can oh, you yeah. be serious for once? This is a very serious oh, production. That should be rigging. That's just the... <laughs> Try to get online the whole time. It did not work. We're trying to get Coca-Cola sponsorships. Can you be serious for once? Um, hey, boy. The 1995 was tough times, boy. <laughs> Why is he like this? Um, it was tough, guys, boy. I apologize. <laughs> Uh, we are going to discuss all things NFL playoffs. Oh, I'm man. excited about Matthew Stafford going back home. I'm excited about Detroit fans burning his jersey, which I think is crazy, but it's great theater. And, guys, let's discuss <clears> NFL <throat> playoffs. Are there any games you guys are excited to see? Baker Mayfield may go to the Super Bowl. Who? Who? Are you, are you really going to try to steal my Super Bowl pick? Because <laughs> I said that last you know, week. He's going to beat Philly. Baker Mayfield, Super Bowl champion. I laughed after it over it. He's gonna but be Philly. I I am intrigued about um Miami and Buffalo, man. I mean, not Miami and Buffalo. My bad. I apologize. Miami and KC. Nick's they, frozen. Does he have dial up? <laughs> no, I am not frozen. Rudy, you can hear me. I, right? I, I, I think I think his face got frozen because he forgot what he was gonna say. Exactly. No, no, I remember. <laughs> no, no. Net zero jokes. Does he have? <laughs> Hey. Okay, all right, all right, all right. Okay, okay. What's going on? Nah, but for real though, I'm intrigued about my incredibly frozen. I'm sorry, viewers. Um, this is probably the best face that he has. So just bear with us as he gets back. If you want me to ju- if you want me to jump in, I'm happy to jump in. Um he'll chime in after You know, look, look man, but, but, but storylines, everything. <laughs> But Buffalo, I mean, Miami could have happened again if Miami hadn't, you know, shit the bed as usual. Um, but, yeah, am I excited about the Dolphins-Chiefs game? I guess. You know, I'm a Dolphins fan, but, you know, we got six starters on defense out. You have no pass rushers. They had tryouts again. I think Nick tried out this week for to play to replace Davian Howard. They said no. They said no. They said no. That's some bullshit. Because the guys they got right now, Eli Apple's fucking terrible. That guy can't. uh, Oh my god, he's so bad. Eli Apple, apple sauce, apple vinegar, apple cider. He should be on the bench. (laughs) He should be. Is Nick speaking? He is. Um, Absolutely frozen. This is hilarious. But but um, no, I'll tell you this. The the fact of the matter is the. As a Dolphins fan, I want to see if the Dolphins can win a playoff game. We haven't won a playoff game since 2001 when we beat the Colts um, 23-17 with Lamar Smith at running back. Um, Needed a 200-plus yard game. I was actually on my way to New Orleans to go see the Hurricanes play the Gators in the Sugar Bowl. Um, That was pretty crazy because I was in Tallahassee on the way over there, and the game was blacked out in Miami. Let's put it on radio. Yeah, and um, the fact is the Dolphins, Tua has got to get his shit together. They can blame whoever they want. We lost on – the Dolphins lost on Sunday because of Tua. 
Tula's reads, I don't know what the hell he's looking at half the time. If Tyreek Hill's on the field, he stares him down the whole damn game. Then he comes out for one play and stares in one direction at Chase Claypool. Don't know why he's staring at Chase Claypool. It's like he decided, I'm throwing there before the play started. And he threw it right to a DB who knew the play and was waiting for the ball. It, it's watching the mistakes that Tua makes with, with his reads now, it's just becoming painful. He underthrew Hill earlier in the game, which caused that bounced ball, which otherwise should have been a first down. But the fact is, they did not run the ball in the second half against Buffalo. They have to run the ball. They're not going to beat Kansas City throwing the ball. They got to run the damn ball. They got Achen, who's who was Achen was killing it in the first half against Buffalo. And then all of a sudden, they had three running plays the entire second half against the Bills. You're not beating Buffalo running the ball three fucking times. Rudy, you sound like you're intrigued. You I am, I'm, I'm intrigued to see if the, the, the Dolphins have any nuts left. You said because, you're intrigued. Now you sound like you're intrigued. Of course I'm a, I'm a Dolphins fan. But I, I mean, I'm, I'm absolutely intrigued because I want to see if the Dolphins have any fucking nuts. Because what they showed last week was embarrassing. The defense played their ass off minus half the defense. Lost Jerome Baker again. He made a monster play before the half to save a touchdown. After Vic Fangio went the most ridiculous coverage I've ever seen ever, dropping everyone back to the goal line on th- on, f- on freaking third and 10 oh. at the 21, you let him get 10 yards. Like, what are you doing? At times, yeah. I don't know who's coaching. These guys are paid to coach. Rudy, they let him get 10 yards and get the sideline to get out of there. Yeah, back. if you're going to do that, at least put your quarters up on them and give the inside route and the clock runs out. No, you're I'm going to give him the sideline to – Easy play, first down. Now they got – I mean, what? Only Josh Allen's stupid enough to throw the ball in the middle of the field. You have I'm to throw the ball in the end zone. I'm not mad at that, though. Well, the Baker, the, Baker made a great play. Oh, exactly. Because the momentum looked like he was going to drag Eli oh. Apple. Oh, he would have dra- dragged Eli Apple's sorry ass in because Eli Apple's so, trash. He would have dragged him to the fucking locker room. But, but, but God damn, man, like run the fucking ball. To drag Eli to the locker room, man. Man, run the ball. You know, like you, you see what happened with Michigan and Washington. When they ran the ball, they had to keep running the ball. Stop throwing the ball. Go back to what you do. Run the damn ball. And the fact is, is that without Jalen Waddle, Tua is impotent. Bluntly, he's I'm, he, he, I'm, he, he he is useless because he stares at, at. If you look at the numbers, he threw the ball. The receivers, I think, had four or five catches between the rest of the receivers, and. Really? Tyreek had seven. Really? I think, I think he practiced with those guys enough to know that he only should look at Tyreek if Waddle's not. Then we, then we need to be running the ball. Then, then we need to be run the ball. So, run I'm the not, ball. so, like, how you blame it on Tua? I'm not going on Tua. I'm blaming it on Matt Daniel. Well, Matt Daniel has a problem. He's part of it, but Tua's really? reads are – like, he's well, under throwing we, balls like we, crazy. We were texting, and I said – I said – I said, uh, Chris Johnson Jr., number 28 – yeah, you said 20, 22 carries until you said 28 carries after he's just blowing them. Yeah, I agree I with said, you. I said 22 carries at first, and I said 25. And then 20, and I said 20. yeah. Every time he touched the ball, it shit looked explosive. It's it looked, like yeah. Nobody it could crazy. stop him. Nobody could get to him. He was making moves when there was no space available to make moves, and he was still getting 5, 10, 20, 30 yards. I said, oh, that guy's amazing. Get him the ball, and you win the game. They said, nah, man. We're going to give it to two and we're going to throw this thing. I say, why? Why? And then you got people online talking about, oh, well, not online, but people on the airways saying that, um, yeah, Josh Allen played amazing, 400 yards. Yeah. They had 14 points of, as an offense. What saved them was a punt return where the punt return wasn't even supposed to catch the ball at the fucking four-yard line. You're supposed to let it bounce. You're supposed to touch your heels at the 10-yard line and let it bounce in. But he said, fuck it, I'm about to make a play. And he did the game and then the score, but that's not even the game I'm most intrigued about. I'm intrigued about uh, uh, Green Bay and Dallas, man. I think that there's a possible upset looming there, man. Um, I think mm-hmm. the quarterback has been playing amazing, man. Love has been great, he's been throwing the ball over the field everywhere to wherever you want to throw it. 18 touchdowns the last seven, eight games to one pick. Um, they have a running game. Um, their defense is a little suspect, but we all know that the Cowboys, I mean, you could take C.D. Lamb out the game. If you could control him a little bit, then you could force him to throw the ball to other players, and he really don't want to right now. But I'll keep throwing it to Lamb, too, because he keeps getting open. But um, I like that game, man. Cowboys have to show that they can actually get it done. Every year we get our hopes up about this team, 
and then he let us down. And we laughed at it because it's funny because we we love the misery of Cowboy fans. I, at least I know I do because they had like 2,000 UM fans that still harp on that one championship and Cowboy fans harp on 1995. And I'm like, yo, it's 2024. Get over it. I, I'm also intrigued. The, the game actually that intrigues me mostly is um, that Buffalo Pittsburgh game. Buffalo oh. and Pittsburgh. Buffalo and Pittsburgh is interesting because Pittsburgh. I mean, Pittsburgh's in the playoffs. Again. Pittsburgh won ten games. They won a five. They won, they won ten they, games. They won. Well, Mike, Tom, Mike Tomlin's the best coach of he, the generation. He's, he's the best coach. He's, he, he's he, Eric Spolstra of football. Yeah, he is the best coach. In the last 25 years in, in the NFL, the best. I don't want to hear about Bill Belichick. The second you took away Tom Brady, the man can't win. Mike Tomlin has won with a media. A, a, Big Ben was a good quarterback. He was never a great quarterback. He no, was he never was. a top five QB. Yes, he was he a was. good quarter. No, he wasn't. He was never yes, a top five QB. No, he wasn't. Yes, he was. With him, he was and, a good. And Antonio Brown, Emmanuel Sanders, and the other I, I didn't say. That they had. I said. I said. Big Ben. I didn't say Antonio Brown. I said no, Big Ben as the QB at was that, a good at that time. After like the first three, four years of his career, he became a top five quarterback. When I when I mean by top five, it was, it was not a he was not a consistent was, top five QB. It was Peyton Manning. It was Tom Brady, and then you had you had Drew Brees, and then you had Big Ben. Who else? Was was there? Aaron Aaron Rodgers was there. Oh, Aaron Rodgers. I mean, but Aaron, Aaron Rodgers, Rodgers was there. Pat Mahomes has been in there. No, that, Pat Mahomes. I'm, I'm, talking, I'm talking. No, about he the was, prime of, of Big well, Ben's career. The, big, the prime of Big Ben. I still don't think he was. He was not a top five top guy. Five. He was. That's. He was a top. I think he was. I think he was a top ten guy. But he was not what I would call an elite quarterback. He was a yeah. good, tough dude. He was yeah. good. And he was tough. He fit Pittsburgh style. Pittsburgh style has always been about hit you in the face, run the ball, pound you. And he fits, and he has that personality to me. Look, I talked to a bunch of people about this. None of the, most of them don't think that Big Ben was a top five guy. You, you stand, you disagree. Yeah, I don't think he was a top five guy. I think maybe a couple of seasons he was a in top five time. guy, yeah, but for his about. career, in look, Tom Brady was a top five quarterback in year sixteen. Like, what are we talking about? Tom Brady threw for five thousand yards his last season with the, with the second to last season. Every, everybody can't be Tom Brady. Everybody can't be LeBron James. We're talking about most people who have a plateau of their career is about four to six years of being great. Well, Tom Brady, Tom Brady became great again in year twelve and thirteen and fourteen. I, so I, 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 X him out, man. Well, my point is that Mike Tomlin is the best. Mike Tomlin's winning with Mason Rudolph and Basuda and Recycle Bin. And hey, he's the guy Rudolph, Rudolph. Well, he, Mason, he's been balling. <laughs> well, again, would he be balling in New England? Probably oh. not. The, and who's? Who, I mean, look, they have the softest pair of receivers on the planet. In, in um, whatever yeah, is in, in, in Deontay and and George, whatever his name in. Uh, George. You know, he's a good. You no, know, he's a good player, but he's softer oh. than freaking Charmin because they don't want to block anybody. You know, they don't want to hit anybody. You know, they, they lost T.J. Watt. But, the man said he didn't want to get rolled up on, Rudy. That's bull crap. You, you, you're playing football. Don't play football, man. It, it, the reality is Buffalo still didn't look good versus the Dolphins. I'm not going to lie. I do the same thing. I'd be like, I see an injury coming. I see motherfuckers coming. I'd be like, well, I'm not jumping into that pile. No. But his back was turned, so I don't know how he saw that. So. He, saw, he saw it on videos what he saw. He saw a video. Because when the play was happening, he didn't see shit, and he freaking didn't make it. He has a block. But you, you have – Buffalo still didn't look that great. Josh Allen did not play great versus the Dolphins. He turned the ball over three times. He tried to be a hero again is what happened. And when he tries to be a hero, it doesn't work out very well. If not for that punt return, the Dolphins win that game, in my opinion. That yeah. punt return changed the whole game. Well, maybe. They everything. might still, they might still be trying to throw the ball right now. So I don't yeah, know. They <laughs> might. I don't know. Well, I think that I, it would not shock me if, if, if uh, Pittsburgh went into Buffalo and won that game. It would not shock me. It would, because now they're missing their best defensive TJ player. Watt. So, I don't think so. If, if, it, if it's cold, Pittsburgh plays in the cold too. So yeah, I don't yeah, think. I it, mean, I don't think will it will the cold affect the Dolphins? I don't. <clears throat> I don't think they will. It depends on who gets who gets the um, hot start first. If you get your hot start first in the cold, and the cold doesn't feel as cold as you think it's going to feel, it starts feeling mm -hmm. a little warm, and you're like, oh, we're winning. <laughs> if Miami has to score, Miami has to score to win. Miami's yeah. going to have to score to win. They cannot and, get, score 14 points and win. And let me tell you how you fix the cold to all the Miami players. 
It's called Two Shots of Hennessy. You take two shots of Hennessy right before right before the national the game. Anthem. Yes, two shots of Hennessy. So, yeah. so the former professional football player is telling us all that players are walking on the field drunk. <laughs> not, not. Hennessy. <laughs> two shots shouldn't get you drunk. It should just warm up your insides and get your body rolling. So now you're not even thinking about the cold. You're more like, ooh, let's get it. I'm not going to say I've done it before. Just say I know. In Canada. <laughs> hey, I'm not going to say I've done it so before. So this, this is, this is a common Canada. practice. This I is a common Canada. practice in the, in, in the, in the north. <laughs> There's not, I wouldn't say it's just in the north. I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you that people have done this down south also. From what I heard, because I'm not going to incriminate in, in, myself. In, in 55 degree temperature, we're doing that now too? It depends on the day. I might, I might. <laughs> little swig. I don't, hey, let's hear it. Be out there running around on cloud nine, boy. I don't feel nothing. I'm out there hitting everything. If you ever hear me say, yeah, I'm about to smash a motherfucker. Just know I took two shots. <laughs> Yo, Tyree Hill played in Kansas City. He shouldn't be cold. Nah, I don't care where you play that. Cold is cold, Rudy. It's zero degrees. I played one game in zero degrees before. No, that's and cold. I, I didn't play I, it. I walked, I walked outside in zero degrees once in Minnesota. That was the worst and, cold I've ever played. The, the other team scored first, and it felt like the weather dropped a net of 30 degrees. But once it was we took the lead, 30. <laughs> but once we took the lead, I said, ooh, I, I feel warm now. <laughs> but that's how I go, man. But, uh, they should be all right, man. It, it depends on who runs. If they run the ball well that day, if they give the ball to 28, who is the secret weapon that everybody can see besides McDaniels, then they should be okay. But like I said, I mean, I like I, I, I also like that Rams line game, man. It should be a, a good weekend of football, man, from Saturday to Monday. Donald, you're here. Okay, guys. Uh, thank you guys for your colorful commentary. Uh, Nick has been giving a lot of the viewers and fans a lot more TMI than suggested. Um, I love that. That's the, that's the inside the locker room, baby. <laughs> I'm, I'm not sure if that's uh, called dry snitching in some parts of the world. No, I, I didn't. Some of his fellow athletic comrades may not take too kindly of this, but now he's a part of the media, so Nick is going to view things differently. Hey, and if you mix a little bit of C4 um, so yeah, with that. That being said, guys. Oh, um, we are going to go to final thoughts, final comments to all things that we discussed. We went through college football playoffs. We went to LeBron. We went to coaching and the, their growing salaries. And we ended up with the NFL playoffs. If you guys have any last minute comments or thoughts or anything you, you forgot you wanted to say. Oh, yeah. After our last episode, Nick was like, oh, my God, I wish I said that. This no, all I, all I was saying that last week that you do that. All I said was last week that you threw that trade shit at us randomly and it was off guard. What I would have said now is um, Bojan Bonamanovic from Detroit. I, I would definitely put him on a contender. There's a couple teams I think could use him. I think the Dallas Mavericks could use him. Um, I hate to say it, but um, the Lakers could use him. Um, I also would like Laurie Markkinen, gone from Utah until a contender who needs a big man. Let's get him somewhere where a team that could contend. We could, we've been, I've been, Rudy, how long have I been saying? Let's get Laurie over here. Before he went to Utah and had that amazing year, I said, man, he will be a perfect fit with, yep. with, with Bam because Bam doesn't shoot that well. But if we get another 6'10", 6'11", player who can shoot and, and put the ball on the ground and can create. Um, mm -hmm. We can do something. And then we went and got Kevin Love like it was 2008. And I said, no, not that guy. We need Laurie. <laughs> well, we got we got Kevin Love for buyout money, though. That yeah, I, I, I get that. I get that. But I'm but I'm saying yeah, if we could pull off a Laurie type of deal, that would have been amazing. Um, and also, I'm going to end off this statement again by saying in the 1990s, Pat Bev would have been a 20 and 10 <sighs> player in that league. Oh, now he's a t now it's twenty and ten, not just a twenty point score. Now it's twenty and ten. Now he's a ten yeah, assist guy. Too. Rep, the more I look so, at the he, more he, I look he, at nineteen nineteen nineties basketball, I say that Pat Bev is a twenty and ten player. So, so he would average. Seven. 
he would average 10 assists in a time where they were at, where, where teams were scoring 90 points a game. But he yes, can't he, average 10 assists when they're scoring 125 points a game. Yes, he would have been Gary Payton Jr. He would have been the mitten. Pat the mitten, Beverly. Oh, God. <laughs> I have, oh, my God. <clears throat> I got a couple things, a couple thoughts. Um on my brain right now. And Donald and I were talking about, we're both Yankees fans. The Yankees have not pay, spent $1 in free agency yet. Not one. What the fuck is going on here? You're the richest damn baseball team in the world, and you're watching the damn Dodgers pay a billion dollars for two players. Now, mind you, the first, the way they got Otani with this deferment of 98% of his contract is downright criminal, and they need to fix that in collective bargaining because that's complete bullshit. But... To not spend one dollar, they better go get Blake Snell, and this is obviously for baseball people. Blake Snell, Jordan Montgomery, Marcus Stroman, more, more whatever is Stroman, those three dudes. You could get all three of those guys for the amount of money you would spend on Yamamoto. So Brian Cashman better get his head out of his fucking ass and go get those guys, at least two of those three, because I'm so the fact that the Yankees have not spent one dollar in free agency is outrageous. That's your damn. Secondly. Point. That's your damn problem now. Every time y'all spend money, y'all lose. So keep your fucking money in your pocket. You might win, like the Marlins, baby. <laughs> you ignored me. <laughs> no, number two, UFC 299 is in Miami on March 9th. God damn it! What the hell is with these damn ticket prices? Are you taking me? What the fuck? I mean, my God! I went to Vegas for a UFC John Jones fight versus Anthony Smith. It was five fifty per ticket in Vegas to sit in the lower level in the corners. I went to Jacksonville for Jorge Masvidal and Kamar Usman after they came back for two years with COVID. Those tickets were $250 in the same corner. <clears throat> I went to Chicago to see Henry Cejudo and Marlon Marais. Those same tickets in the corner were about 300 bucks in the United Center. I went to Houston. For Michael Chandler and Charles Oliveira, same corner area, 300 bucks, 350 I went to Vegas again for Usman Kobe Covington one. Same thing. What the hell is going on? I'm coughing. My, my bad. Well. Um, 850 fucking dollars? Oh, all right. Rudy, Rudy. Rudy. What? what? Rudy, are you yeah. going? Are you going? Yeah. Um, the fuck up. That's no, why they're doing but, it. That's why they're no, doing no. it. That's why they're doing it. Because they know they got you. You're gonna pay it, right? I, I paid seven fifty for Izzy and Alex Pereira. That was a year ago. There, they raised that seven fifty price to. I don't know what the UFC is thinking, but this arena. Yeah, I'm an idiot. I paid yeah. eight fifty. But I'm telling you right now, this arena will not be as full. And then Dana White's gonna come sit here and complain. After the card, and say, "Well, they didn't bring anybody." You're charging mortgage payments for these tickets. I can go to the Super Bowl for this amount of money. This is, I mean, this is bananas. How much they've increased these prices. I'm, I mean, I love the U. I love MMA, but goddamn, I may be just going to bare knuckle shit going on because this on. is, this Hold is on. crazy. Hold on, Paying. real quick. Hold on, real quick, Rudy. Call Dana real quick. I know I got his number. Yo, Dana. Rudy got fucking complaints. <laughs> he said the tickets are too fucking high. <laughs> fix it. Fix it now. Donald, hey, do you, know, you know what ringside is? Cage side is $11,000 on Ticketmaster. That's ridiculous. I would not pay $11,000 for Mike Tyson versus Evander Holyfield 1. That's ridiculous. Well, you're going... Really on the car. They got you. Nobody on the card. Yeah, I mean, oh, I mean, O'Malley's a fun guy, and there's some good fighters, but eleven thousand dollars for ring for cage side is outrageous. My where, God, where are they having this at? The arena, the 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 Triple A oh, Caseya okay. Center, whatever they um, want to call it now. I don't even know the name of it anymore. Yeah, Caseya Center. Yeah, it's in Miami at the at the arena. Yeah, okay. okay. But uh, yeah, I mean, I love MMA, and I'm gonna go. But I was really, really contemplating, like, because I don't sit in the upper deck. That's the problem. I don't sit with the peon. Sorry. Damn. <laughs> wow. I, 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 once I graduated from the upper deck, I, I can't, 
It's like wow. once you graduate the suites, it's really hard to go back to the regular seats. Wow. But you know, you do. You go to the lower level, but that's like you know, that's like graduating from a big booty girl and then going back to this. It's hard. It's hard. I get it. I get it. I, I mean, it, it, it is. It is that. Uh, it's that thing where you know, you you. I mean, you gra- you 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 used to stay when you're in college at the Days Inn, the Econo Lodge, the Howard Johnson, and then you move up to the Marriott. You move up to the, the Hilton, and then you move up even higher. You know, you're going to may, maybe you stay at the Ritz Carlton ones. Once you go to the Ritz Carlton, it's kind of hard to go back. <laughs> I'm done. All right. Well, perfect, uh, guys. That we we've talked about everything: sports, <laughs> hospitality, hotels, suites. Level of suites. <laughs> With that being said, guys, this was a fun one. Um, viewers and listeners, I hope you guys are getting a feel for what we're doing here. Week two, we'll be back week three with some colorful topics. We're going to get into some, you know, live entertainment, not just sports. It's it's sports and entertainment here. We may get into some film. We may get into some television. Never know. We may get into some a lot of colorful commentary. Rudy and I like to t- talk about politics on our sides. So we may get into that as well. But as you guys know, the show is come on now. And we're excited to bring you guys some live entertainment. And we are back next week. We will have some kinks that we're fixing. We've been having some technical difficulties with audio. But you, we're going to remind you guys to follow us on Instagram, YouTube, Spotify. Come on now podcast is the handle. That's come on now podcast, the handle on Instagram on all your social platforms. We'll be bringing you guys some amazing, amazing content. And I'm not just saying that because I'm an executive producer on the show and moderator. I'm saying that because we're three pretty exciting men to listen to. Shout out, Matt Zero. That being said, you guys have a great, wonderful day or night whenever you're listening to us or watching us. And we'll be back for you next week, episode two. We are out. Come on now.